In today's video, we are going to look at callouts for every regular multiplayer map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Hello and welcome. I am Amedio602, and if this is your first time on the channel and you want to improve at Call of Duty, then start now by subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you don't miss out on tips, tricks, and tactics to make you a better player. Back when I was playing the Call of Duty Modern Warfare multiplayer beta, I noticed that there were callouts for several locations on the maps, which are displayed at the top center of your HUD along with your compass. Toward the end of the beta, I decided that it would be useful to run around and learn all these different locations, and that turned out to be a great idea, because the in-game characters in Modern Warfare are shouting callouts at you throughout the match. And if you don't know where the rug shop is on Azir Cave, then keep watching because I'm going to show you that along with a ton of other callouts. Please keep in mind that today's video only covers the regular multiplayer maps. It does not cover the gunfight maps because there are no callouts displayed on the HUD. And I haven't gotten around to doing this for the ground war maps, and I wanted to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible, so that's why ground war isn't included. If you would like to see a ground war version of this video, just let me know in the comments below, and maybe we'll make that happen. Today's video is going to feature a lot more graphics than usual, so if you're just listening to this video, you won't get nearly as much out of it as if you're actually watching the content. First up, we have Anaya Palace, which is a gigantic map with a lot of locations. On this map, you actually have five domination points. Of course, you also have the palace itself. The image on the screen right now shows several of the major callouts in the map. Keep in mind that, as with all of these images, there might be a couple of small sections that I left out, but those sections are minor and usually insignificant. And since we're going to be going through all of the maps anyway, I thought I would also offer my opinion on each one. Please keep in mind that these opinions are still very early in the game's life cycle and are, of course, subject to change over time based on how the game evolves. I'm not a big fan of Anaya Palace. I believe that the palace itself is quite fun, but the map is just way too big. If they would decrease the size of this map down to just the palace and the surrounding areas, I think this would be a good map. But as it stands right now, I'm not a fan. Next up, we have Arklov Peak. Arklov Peak features a windmill and a bar on one side of the map, and a barn, church, and general store on the other side. I believe this map is one of the better maps in this game. Our third map is Azir Cave. This is a map that most of you will probably already be familiar with since it was in the beta. I was a little bit disappointed that the cave only had two callouts, Cave East and Cave West, while the middle of this map had many different callouts, such as Main Road, Tower, Abandoned Building, Fuel Depot, Rug Shop, and Town Center. Overall, I think that Azir Cave is an okay map. It's definitely middle of the road as far as I'm concerned. It's far better than Anaya Palace, but it's not nearly as good as Arklov Peak. Our fourth map on this list is the Euphrates Bridge. When I first dropped into this map in a custom game, I thought that this would be a fantastic map. However, because of the stickiness of the spawns, it doesn't play as well as I had hoped. Euphrates Bridge is middle of the road, but I think it could be a lot better with some spawn adjustments. One thing to keep in mind while you're looking at this image is the bridge callout only applies when you're actually on the bridge above. All of the other callouts in the bridge area are underneath the bridge. Map number five is Grazna Raid. This is another map from the beta, and I think that it's on the lower end of the maps. I feel like there's just not a lot of really good flow in this map. In fact, right before recording this commentary, I played a game of Ground War on this map, and I only had, I believe, three kills the entire game. I'm still learning the spawns and the flows, just like everyone else, so I have hope that they will be adjusted in the near future. A couple of key points for the Grazna Raid callouts are that the trench covers most of the north side of the map, and that the main street actually loops around. Gunrunner is one of my favorite maps, and it was in the beta as well. The callouts for Gunrunner are very straightforward, and in fact I have a third image for this map where I've color-coded all of the different callouts, since they were so well delineated. As with Grazna Raid, Gunrunner has a large section of the map which is just simply known as the train yard, and you can't really tell where enemies are based on this callout. 
Regardless of that, Gunrunner is one of my favorite maps at the moment. Another map in the top tier list, and probably my favorite map in the game at this point in time, is Hackney Yard. The callouts in Hackney Yard are very well defined, so I have a color-coded version of this map as well. One thing to note with Hackney Yard, as well as the other maps on this list, is that sometimes the callout will simply be in the center. Of course, this means the center of the map, and in the case of Hackney Yard, this covers a large portion of the map known as Cargo Land. When I see Cargo Land, I kind of think of a UPS facility with some fun slides in it. Maybe a FedEx roller coaster. <laughs> Who comes up with the names of these callouts anyway? Cargo Land. Kind of a funny name. Next up, we have Piccadilly. Piccadilly is probably the most confusing map for me because I can never seem to find anything. One other improvement which could really help out Piccadilly would be to improve the spawns. I've noticed that the A spawn is extremely sticky, making spawn trapping on this map very real indeed. Because of lack of flow and lack of proper spawns, I'm going to rank Piccadilly near the bottom of my list, but I believe this map could easily be improved over time. Ramaza is a middle of the road map as far as I'm concerned, and just like Azir Cave, it has a rug shop. Thank goodness my old rug was just about worn out. The interesting thing to note about Ramaza is that the ruins area opens up back around, so instead of just hanging out at the little half wall there, you can circle back around. That's something that I have not seen a lot of people doing yet. Another interesting thing to note about Ramaza is you can actually get up to the top of the construction area, and that is a very popular camping spot indeed. The last map that we are going to look at today is St. Petrograd, or St. Petersburg. Low to mid-tier, I'm not sure yet, it really depends on the game and the enemies that you're playing against. In my opinion, just like Anaya Palace, St. Petrograd is just too big. I would be okay if they got rid of the entire apartments area. The apartments, the bar, the pool hall. That entire side of the map serves no purpose in an objective mode like Domination. If the apartments weren't there, I believe this could be one of the best maps in the game. What do you think? Which maps are your favorites and least favorites so far in the game? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to share it with your friends and leave a thumbs up rating because that really helps out the channel. If you're new to the channel and you want to improve at Call of Duty, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. And as always, thank you very much for watching.